Morning and welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. My name is Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. And we're going to have another hour of lovely doodling, hanging out together, keeping each other company and just doing what we do on a Thursday. So come on in. I'm hoping that um, uh, the sound is good. And Jilly is with us in the building today because Paul's on, on the telly, on the craft store, of course. So my hope is that, um, that Jilly will just let me know that the sound is good and then we can get started. Sound is good. Thank you, Jilly. So come on in. Um, I'm hoping that everything is hooked up and linked up and then we can get started. You rock. There we are. Good morning. Good morning. So, yeah, come on in. It's very cold outside here today. We, it was very frosty. Hello, hello, hello. Good to have your company. Uh, while everybody's coming in, I was, I was thinking, I mentioned it on the blog yesterday. There's, it's, I feel, I personally feel that it's too big of a gap between Thursday and Thursday for the shack. I just, it's, it's kind of, we need to do two days a week. That's what I think. Because then there's a little bit more flow in our projects as well and in our doodles, you know. So I think two days a week would be good. I am up for it. Um, so if the bus driver's up for it, it's not mandatory. Of course it's not. Guten Morgen, komm rein. Herzlichen Wunsch, komm rein. Hello, Ken. Lovely to have your company. Yeah, so there you go. I was just thinking it would be great to get together on Mondays and Thursdays. What's your opinion? You think it's a good idea? Don't worry about me. I can drive a bus for an hour on a Monday morning. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm actually really, um, I think it's a really good idea. I think that, uh, the, I think, yeah, would love to. Would love two mornings. Yeah, I'm up for it. Yeah, would love two mornings. Yep. Yeah. Yep, good morning. Yeah, two mornings would be lovely. Right, that's it. Voted. <laughs> Voted, seconded, sorted. So from now on, my friends, we're going to meet on Mondays at 10 o'clock as well. So that means Monday, 10 o'clock, good start to the week, you know. Dave said he's going to start doing Key John, Quee John. He's going to start doing that. I might go with him on a Tuesday. <laughs> he said, don't laugh at me. I said, what are you going to wear, a leotard? <laughs> I just can't imagine David. He said, no, not a leotard. Anyway, he's going to do that. And we're going to get together on a Monday and a Thursday. So Monday, 10 o'clock. Tuesday, Shack Shack with Linda and Paul. Brilliant. Um, Thursday, Shack Shack. There you go. Here to keep you company. Sounds good, huh? And the thing is, even if you're out or you're about or you're doing other things, that's great. It's always recorded. You can always catch up later. It's just not live then. But the doodles are there for you, you know, because we believe, don't we, that when you get out of your head and with your hands, be it a little scribble or a doodle or a flower or a fairy, whatever you fancy drawing, then um, it's very good for the head, isn't it? It's good for the head. And the thing about only meeting once a week is that we can really, although I, I really enjoy the little bite-sized pieces that we do, it's, it's a whole week before we look at it again. So if we were doing anything, can you imagine how long it would take us to do like, like Japan, when we went to Japan on the bus, on our trip, or, or Africa? We'd be here for four months, wouldn't we? It'd be a sabbatical. <laughs> anyway, so should we get started? Lovely to have your company. Come on in. Yeah, so television yesterday went very well. I'm so glad you like Josie's grids. Aren't they superb? I do like a diagonal grid. They they are my cup of tea because I think for all our groovy shackers, does it go around the corners, like the two corners? <laughs> Makes sense to me. And also I like them because um, this these particular ones because they're bigger they're larger they're the a4 square plates so if you're not sure what i'm talking about our paul is on again at 10 uh he's on at eight o'clock this morning he's on at 12 o'clock this morning and four o'clock on the craft store the craft store yes yeah, so look him up he's really good at that stuff 
and they're beautiful designs. We've got some fantastic art samples from the design team. I went up there and did the launch at six o'clock last night because there's a lot going on up there, as you probably know. Anyway, so I went up there and then Dave, Dave, he had a meeting up in the, somewhere near Corby. And so then we came home together and we got caught on the M25. For those of you who are not for, from our neck of the woods, the M25 is a motorway, like a big orbital that goes all the way around London. You could spend the rest of, you could spend your life just going around in a circle. Yesterday evening, I almost felt that I had already been going around that way once. And um, the roadworks in the night are obscene. So by the time we hit the road, we didn't get in until 1.30 in the morning. 1.30 in the morning, that's ridiculous. So um, I won't be doing that again. And I don't think Dave will. But uh, but it was okay. The six o'clock launch was really good. Really enjoyed it. And it's just, yeah, it's key at the moment. You understand. So let's have a look. Shall we get to our doodles? Let me put my other glasses on. Now, last Thursday, when we got together, is everybody all right? Why am I racing? Not telly. Slow down that bus. Kicks back. Oh. We've got to travel gently, friends, haven't we? Travel gently. That's our motto. That was our motto last year, and that's our motto this year. So what we were going to do for the next few weeks, and now we can really make loads of lovely tiles. I'll do like a tile. What we were doing last week, let's have a look at the one that's completed. Here we go. So, oh, that's quite a long way away. Should we get in a bit tighter? Come on, then. If you're new to the chat and you're wondering what on earth I'm talking about, right, every week, twice a week now, in fact, from Monday, we get together and we just doodle something simple. So, for example, we just took, last week, we just took a little, a little one of our stamp board shapes. You get all different shapes. You know, I like these. I, I, I at the moment, I'm sticking with squares only because they, they tile so, well, obviously, look, duh. Um, Done a couple of different ones. Look, chilling. I like that one as well. That's quite nice. Same principle, but filled in differently. Look. And so what we were doing, we, we did the, the actual doodle. Like if I break it down a bit more, for anybody who's new, you can see all I did was take a black pen. So I took, we've got these pens. You don't, you can do it with a biro. But I took the fattest one, the number eight. Like these are micron pens. So I took the the biggest one and I and this is what we did really just started in one corner and then we just started putting in lines like this like hair yeah and then and then we started coming back the other way and then coming through like that and then didn't we and then we started kind of overlapping them a little bit because that, of course, is going to give us a really good shading option, right? So then, when you when you do that, then you can come, you can come in. No, I'm not doing this right. See, you can come in like that, and then yeah, that's better. So now I can come in like that and like that. And one of the things that we were talking about last week was when something looks this ropey, and it does. I know it does. My, I'm not mad. I look at that and I think, I'm never going to bring this back. <laughs> okay. But you do. You just keep going, right? Just keep bringing in the lines. You can do a few like that, right? And then maybe another one there. And then you just keep bringing in the lines. I'm just rev we're re sort of reviewing what we did last week. So you see how, see, and then you come in like that. You can come like that. And then you make whole, see that's overlapping. So you come like that. Don't worry if it's too straight, it's not straight. And then we'll come along this one here. So that's at the back of that one. See? So it's just, and then let's do this. Let's go right up like that, like that. Let's make a real wavy one, right? Just this is extreme, but you'll get what I'm saying. And then, for example, now this one is in underneath that one. So this will be a really interesting one for shadow, right? Because that now is underneath there. 
And if you wanted to make these areas smaller, you can go in afterwards and reduce the size of those bits after the fact, you see, like that. And whilst this looks really, really ropey, okay, when you actually, see that doesn't look any different there, does it? But when you start to fill the areas, this is why, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm in favour of getting the different size pens because this is like the thick, the big outline one. And then when you go into the tighter areas, then when you start using and the colouring in, see, I start using the one and the 005, the really thin ones. So, so now, for example, you go to these lines and you think, right, now I want to fill them in. So, so what we were doing last week was we started putting these sort of peas in a pod in, didn't we? You just go with the flow look. And we put peas in a pod in. On this one, it's the same sketch. I just I just did a second one just to give you an idea. Instead of putting peas in on this one, I just put lines in. So where the peas or the pearls, let's call them pearls, not peas, Barbara. Where the pearls went here, right? So say, for example, this one here, you think it's a little bit too big. It's going to be like a football. It's going to be like a medicine ball. So you can come in like that. And you can close that, look. And then if you wanted to, you could then put your, um, do you know what, I might even go even a bit more, like that. And then you put your your pearls in, see? And, and now they're not so huge. And they, then you put your, some black in colour in the area around the pearls. Here we go. Still got a little white line in there. And you build your tiles. You can start from the top and work your way down. You can look at the whole thing and then just start doing pieces. See, with this one, what I started doing, because I wanted to show you the contrast when you put shade in, that's what it looks like without shade. That's what it looks like when you put some black and some shade in. Big difference. So if your work looks like that, I think the whole thing, the whole kind of exercise here, if you like, is to just keep going. Go with the flow. Don't try and control the outcome. Don't push the river. Uh, it's really zen you know, um, and just enjoy the journey. Get into the process. Stick with the pen. And you are thinking about what you're doing when you do these kind of lines and pearls and stripes. You know, you're looking for balance as well. So, so these little bite-sized tiles are really good for that stuff. And the thing is, it really is like mental yoga. It's like mental yoga. We talked about this um, in lockdown, you know, that hum and how you just, it's very, very achievable and you don't need much to do it. You need a pen, you need a piece of paper. I mean, yeah, sure. I'm dealing, I'm working with the, with the shapes. We've got like, um, we've got these shapes and I'm dealing with the stamp board shapes because they're just really nice. And you've got, you've got hearts, uh, triangles or bunting as I see, you've got squares, you've got circles. I mean, we're just using the squares here just to get into that kind of frame of mind. And I was showing you, I was showing you last, last week, David made this little frame and, uh, and I just wanted, oh, I'm very close now. Let me pan out a little tiny bit because I'm really getting too close now. So, so you've got this little frame that Dave made from a recycled um, palette, which is great. And when you... You drop that in there. What a nice little piece of artwork that is, you know. Look, as if by magic. So you put one of the tiles in there. And this stuff cuts like butter. So if your tile is the wrong size, then all you've got to do is trim this back, trim the largest one down, see? Isn't that lovely? So I could see four of them on the, on the bed and breakfast wall in Wales. <laughs> and... I guess the object of this exercise, and we're going to stick with this for a little while, is just to, to not give up, you know, keep going. Just keep going. Don't give up. Don't judge your work before it's finished. Makes sense, really. But it's a good exercise for me, too, if I'm honest, because 
when I, I could tell you exactly. And that's why I know your head is going in the same direction as mine. Because if I was thinking out loud while I was doing this, I would be going, well, that's wrong. That's rubbish. Well, that's not going to work, is it? And I've made much too big of a gap there. And what the hell does that look like? And look, this is ridiculous. I've got nowhere to shade. And those those pearls are going to look like footballs. And, and, and actually, do you know what? That is not very enjoyable, is it? Okay. Because you're actually beating yourself up while you're supposed to be relaxing. Okay. So, um... And, and I'm so tired from hanging around the M25 until one in the morning. Um, I just want to chill today. Just chill, you know, because it's the, the head could just run at a million miles an hour, can't it? Does yours as well. Mine just goes off at such a steaming pace. It's like, whoo, open my eyes and off I go again. But there we are. You rock. Right, we're ready. Because I thought we could do a couple of tiles. I've got a couple of really... I mean, the internet's full of it. Don't think for a minute that I invented this. This has been around for a long time, yeah? This kind of doodling, zentangle. There's a world of it out there. There's a world of it out there. But it's very, very easy. And you just develop your own doodles and your own tangles and your own mental yoga you know? And when you get into it, you'll find immediately you relax. And I do, I can only speak for myself, but I find my, my shoulders relax. That's the first thing. And very often, like now, I've got a, quite a crown. I've got quite the headache. But I know by the end of this session, I won't have a headache. It'll be gone. It'll be gone. So come on, let's do a bit of doodling. And what I wanted to do was take you back so here we go. That's how it starts. Then we do some filling, right? Do some filling. And you use different size pens to do that. Then you do the shading. Oh, so you can see here, try not to spit at your artwork, Ray. That never work. Um, so the shading, and this is where I want Jilly to flag up the, the set of pencils. Because the polychromos, the Faber-Castell polychromos, there's a, a set of 12 of them that we've got on our website. I mean, we've got the big tin of 60 with all the lovely colours as well. We've got the pergoliners. We've got all these colours. You may you may already have lovely grey pencils. Look, so these Faber-Castells, they're like a tin of 60, a real birthday treat, these ones, yeah? But the thing is that it's it's these ones here. See all the greys and the, the beiges? They're the, there's more beiges and greys in there. I've got them here. Um, they're the ones that you really, you use when you're doing this tangling. But you know what? Who says? We could do bright red and green ones and turquoise ones. Pick a colour, any colour, you know. But there's a set of uh, like 12 polychromos that we put together from Faber-Castell. And they, they're about, tw I think it's about 20 quid. So with your craft, with your club discount, it's not bad at all. And... And they've got your varying degrees of grey. You've got, I think you've got silver, gold, copper. The metallics are in there because they're not in that tin. Uh, what else we got? Uh, I think we've got a beautiful ivory, you know, off-white. Really nice stuff. So if you're if you're looking to, to get a, sh a, a set of shadowing pencils, they're the ones. If you're not, then use a, an HB pencil. That will do it too, but you just won't get the different varying shades. That's all but it's, they're built for shading. And the other thing I was going to flag up, I've decided to go with this pencil sharpener. It's a Faber-Castell one, and we've got these on, on the thing now, on the website. So we've got, it's good really, because you've got colour here. You can see this? At this end, you've got two, two pockets. At this end, you've got one for the colouring pencils, and at this end, you've got one for the graphite and the jumbo. Now, I don't actually own a lot of jumbo pencils, so I use that one for my eraser. And what's good is, you see, they, it clicks closed. When you want to open it, it says clean on that side, so you open it up like that, and then you can empty it out, you see? And that's good, really, because you can see the blade there. there. So that's how they work. They're good. I, I, I've tried different ones, and I... Pound for pound, 
I would say this is probably the winner. I've always used, I've used this one. There's another one that you can get on Amazon, a blue turquoise one. Um, but we can't source them for you. But they're good too. The, the, the retractable ones, they're quite good. Right, so pencil sharpener at the ready because when we get into the shading thing, we do want to, we want to take this one, which is the beige one, warm grey too it's called, one of my faves. And we're going to go in with the colour. Right, and then we'll slowly put cream on the fingers before we started. Right, that'll do. Okay, so I've got that ready. I've got my pencil. I've got my pens. How are you doing? Have you got your... Let me just see if I can... Is everybody happy? I got this sharpener in blue and silver. Yes, I got this one as well. Hold on, one, two, three. Okay, everybody's happy. Excellent. Okay, good, good, good. We're in the building. Right, so I just have to change my glasses. Sorry. Let's get go let's get going. So the first thing I want to do is, depending on where you are in this game, let's just hang out together. I would suggest that I'm gonna just do a couple of uh, bits here just so that people who who weren't with us last week know how we landed at this one and then we're gonna and then we're gonna color that one in so let's put these to one side and then to do this for example at the moment what i'm going to be working with is the 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 thinner of the micron pens like the one and the o5 but i don't want to hear you say oh i can't do it because i haven't got them get a biro Get a biro. Hey, just got to doodle something. And if you haven't got the stamp board, get a piece of copy paper. Right. Okay. So the first thing we've done is, right, we're going to take our, uh, I'm going to use the number one because I find that's the best one for coming in around the pearls. Right. So we're going to come in around the pearls. That's the thing. And we'll fill in this black here. Okay, and as soon as you begin to do this, so now at this part, do you want to do, do you want to do little, well, you don't have to make it solid black, it's your doodle. There you go, that looks quite nice. Um, and then, for example, this big white piece here, what do I want to do with that? Well, I can always take my thinner, here we go, and I can add another couple of just keep your eye on the road ahead, you see, and you can fill that in like that. So now that's not got that great big gape there. And then on this area here, see, so what you're going to do first of all is colour all these bits in. You'll find that when you do that, it starts to look good. Okay, let's do that first and get in the zone. That's the way to do it. The reason we started doing these little bite size um tiles was because i was getting the feeling on on you know on facebook and with messages and it, that people a lot of people are just losing their mojo they do they, they've lost their creative magic you know um through external circumstances i guess you know and so so I did a week of blogging around, you know, ways to unblock your mojo, ways to get back on the um, arty trail, you know. And, and I suppose that this simple doodle exercise is another way of just getting the flow going again, you know. Just get the flow going again. Once you... It's about, I know, I know exactly how it goes. It's about just sitting with it. And, and it not being too complicated. You don't need much stuff, you know. If you've lost your mojo, like say I, say I do in pottery and, and, and I've lost my mojo, you know. It's a lot harder to find your pottery mojo because it means 
getting on your dirty overall. It means going out in the cold. It means you know you're going to have to hose yourself down and wash your hair and, and you know, and it all gets very dirty because you're working with mud and uh, it takes a long time. And it's when you start a ceramic process, you know it's not a half hour little doodle. There's a lot, there's a lot involved. So, so, I mean, I'm lucky. I haven't really lost my, my pottery mojo, but I imagine if you did, you'd have to get quite motivated to get back in the building. Whereas with this, it's easy to get back on this bus because all you need is a pen and a piece of paper. You don't have to, don't even have to get out of bed if you don't want to, you know. And then it's just a, it's just about, I guess, project completion. It's about finishing it and learning not to judge it until it's done. And the other thing about this whole th process, it's, it's, it is just that it's, it's a head exercise. If you jogged, <laughs> I'm not a jogger, but if you jogged, let's say, and you jogged around the the block, <laughs> I'm just imagining it now, right? I mean, a lot of people do, don't they? Pound the pavements and run, and they and it's good for them. It's good for their them. Well. They believe it's good for them, and so therefore they do it. They would not consider it to be a waste of time, would they? Any more than this is, this is not a waste of time. It, and it doesn't matter what the outcome is. It's the doing of it. It's the, it's the actual, it's the action. That's the, look how nice this is already looking. You see? Now let's have a look. We, we, so you step back and you look at it and you think, okay, so I've done quite a few pearls now. Now I probably, I quite enjoy, look at the difference between that one and that one. This one is quite busy, isn't it? It's got quite a lot of, um, if you look at this one, it's got quite a lot of uh, lines and dots and, you know, it's definitely busy. So this one, maybe we can make it more open not so busy, L less noise, if you if you get what I mean. So if we're going to do that one with less noise, how about we combine, we do a little bit of this one and this one, yeah? So less noise just means more space. So how about we just do big open boxes like that? There you go, that one's coming through there. Yeah. So it doesn't all have to be so busy. And then a bit of balance. So possibly where I could go, you can leave quite a bit white. Got a bit of shadow going. You see, you can open it up. Watch the difference. Same, same idea, different look. I'm thinking that then I, I, I what do you think? Uh, okay, gap. Yeah. So how about we put these big dividers in here? Is that jigsaw puzzles? Do you think they're a waste of time? I love doing jigsaw puzzles. Um, crosswords. Do you think they're a waste of time? I love crosswords. In the end, what you do with your time is how you spend your life because it is the life that you're spending. And if this is how, what I believe, and it, it, however you spend your life, however you pass your time, the main thing is that you have some joy or some happiness in it, don't you think? And if you, if this makes you relax, and if you're a productive person like I am, I, I'm. I'm excited to make tiles that I can possibly frame, that I can give as gifts 
or I can make into really nice art, yeah? But maybe you're just somebody that just wants to do it and then put it away somewhere. You see what I mean? The main thing is that you, you just, that you are with what you are doing. That's what I mean, that you are with what you are doing. Look at the difference. See how this one is more open. And the only thing is, the only thing is that the, the swirl, the, the flow is, is, is wider. You see? Interesting, isn't it? And then look at that one. But you put them together, they're pretty cool, you know. Hmm. So let's have a look at some shading. Let's look at some shading. And then we can move on to, to another one. Let's, let's do the shading on this one first, because I think it's easier to see. But it will change this one too when you start looking at the overlap. It's the overlaps. What's overlapped where? And what I want to do is use a, a light gray pencil. So I'm going to use that warm gray, right? And it's about the overlaps and it's about the pearls. So the first thing we want to do, let's have a look at the pearls. If we, we're going to do some pearl shading, let's do the pearl shading on that side, like a, like a moon, like a crescent moon. Oh, hang on a minute. Let's get a piece of card. Yeah, I think my voice is going. It's worth talking. Right. <sighs> okay. So we're going to put some shade on that side, just on that side. There you go, on the pearl, around there. This is dead easy, really. There you go. So we'll do the pearls like that, with that colour. You see? You see that? So you leave a bit of white, don't you? Let's do these ones as well. Take your time. It's not a race. Be nice. I got caught up doing these last week while I was stressing about something. There's a lot going on at the moment in the business world. And, um, and my way to deal with it is this. I just, I just sat down on my own and did a few of these. And I don't listen to music or, you know, I don't need any more noise in my head. I've got plenty of voices in my head. But what I found was that when I, when I surfaced again, after I'd done these tiles, so I've got, that's why I've got a few of them, see, um, I felt much better for it, much more relaxed, much more um, kind of at one with the situation, you know, just got to go with the flow, really. I mean, you're in the same boat, in a, you're in a different in a different way, we're in the, all in the same boat, aren't we? We're just trying to get through life safely and try and find a little bit of serenity, I guess, is the word, isn't it? Serenity? I don't like aggro. I don't like conflict. I, 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 oh. And you can't always avoid it. Sometimes you've just got to have the fight. You've got to have the confrontation. But I go to great lengths to to not have drama in my life. I don't I don't thrive on drama. Some people do, I don't. I don't know about you. I don't, you know, I don't don't enjoy drama. It makes me anxious. See how you do the so the pearls now. I've done it with a real light grey. I love this colour. In fact, this one. <laughs> do you remember last year in lockdown it was a boring grey get your boring grey out and and I go through these like a dose of salts and this is the one it's in the tin of 60 but it's also in the pack of 12 I thought nobody will worry about having a duplicate of this one you know it's the best warm grey it's like a nice it's like boring beige brilliant brilliant boring beige Right, so what we can do now, shading-wise, so we still haven't gone to the, the overlap bit, have a look at the open, these open lines. You've got some of them as well. So what we'll do is we put the shadow, the boring, the brilliant boring beige on that side. 
So what we'll do is going to be the same kind of thing. Let's have a think for a minute. So we'll put the beige, if that's the shadow on that side, then the beige is going to be on that side of the line. See? On that side, isn't it? Let me make this like that. So this is quite a good exercise. Or is it on the other side? Let's have a think. Let me just have a little moment. Yep. Retracts. Let me take this one out. So if I put it on that side, get it off that side. I mean, that's the thing about this. If you don't, if you don't like what you've done, just take it away. Right, that'll do. Okay. Just got to get the optical illusion right. That's the thing. Okay. So, so in that case, we're going to put the shading because the light's hitting there, you see. So we put the shade in there. I'm not going to get hung up on this. I'm just going to put some shading in there. That'll do. Yeah, because the light's hitting it there, see. That'll do. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That works. Nice. Oh, Sam Crow's in the building. Jilly's just told me. Morning, Sam. Hey, you. When are we doing that TV show together then, missus? Is that in February? Can't wait. Be great. It's good to have your company, Sam. Right, see, so you put this lovely shading in. Hmm. Subtle. Let's call it subtle. And always remember, if you don't like it, you take it away again. Right, so we've got that shading in. That's quite nice. We've got that shading in. And then we'll go to a darker grey. So I'm going to hit the, I don't know, I've just got a darker grey. I'm not going to overthink it. I've just got, um, uh, what have I got? Cold grey for, that'll do. And then this one, though, it needs to be a bit sharper because... I want to get closer to the edge with this one. So I'm just going to get that sharper. Okay. Right, and now, so to make the, the pearls darker, I'm just going to put a little bit more on that edge there. There you go. So this will make them rounder, just by adding a little bit more depth on that side. There we go. That'd be good. See, so you're just intensifying the depth on that side. And it makes the, see how it makes the pearls look more, can you see this all right? It's coming a bit closer, darling. Oh, there you go. So you see, you're putting a little bit more shade on that side like that. And that will really make these look like little, real proper little pearls. Look, it's like, I love doing this. We've done some fantastic gemstone work and that in the shack, haven't we, as well? It's quite good. So, the object of this exercise is to calm down. See? Doesn't it look good? Hey? And the other thing is to just not sweat the small stuff, not sweat the small stuff. This is all just small stuff, you know? You don't have to, there are no judges, there's nobody, there's not a competition. There's no comparison. Nobody's going to say, oh, yours is better than mine, or mine's better than yours, or what a mess you made of that. You know, nobody. And if they if they did, then they shouldn't be in the in the building, really. See? Doesn't that look good? So get the darker one in like that. Doesn't that look nice? Then we'll turn this round. And um, where you've put the shade in with the brilliant boring beige, what we'll do is we'll just put a little flash of 
shadow closer to the edge. Here we go. There we are. So you just, and it's a good exercise in pressing hard and then letting you, just letting the pressure off. Can you go like that and then, and that look nice now, hey? And we haven't even started on the, on the shadow to make the, the folds start coming through. Looking good though. Have a look. Are you doing this with me or are you just hanging out? watching. Something worth trying, you know. It's worth just trying. And it's it's something that you can build on as well, you know, because they're little pint-sized pieces. Look, you do a little heart. That'd be a nice shape to do, a heart. I've got another one in the pipeline. Look, I'm doodling. This is the one I want to go to next with you. This is going to be a cool one. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. That'll be a good one. But first we need to we need to stick to the plan. Bit of project completion. See, I was talking about project completion earlier. Let me just make sure I'm on the right track here. Um, with the project completion, you know. Many of us don't. I had to learn project completion. Because we've got this innate fear of criticism or rejection, many of us just never finish the work. Because if you don't finish the work and you don't complete the project, then it will never be in a place where it could even be judged. You see? It's quite straightforward psychology, I suppose. You know, people that don't... I, I, I was terrible. I used to be terrible for project completion. I had to teach myself. And that's why, for me, box ticking is key, you know. I used to, great starter, lousy finisher. <laughs> that's the expression. <laughs> but it's actually quite deep-seated. What it, what it's sort of, what it infers is that you, you don't finish the job because you, you don't want to be judged. You know, I had, to th I had to work that one out. I thought, why is it that I never finish anything? This is a long time ago. I worked it out. And then I realized that it was primarily because I was fearful around getting judged for what I did. Isn't that ridiculous? Hey? Right, so now we've got a little bit of black in there. Should we add a little bit more black or should we do the shading first? Let's do the shading first because then you can really see, can't you? Colour. I'm going to go in with those greys. Just sharpening that one a bit. Yeah, I must say, I mean, it's a new sharpener, so it's going to work well, isn't it? <laughs> but it is a good one. Right, let's take that light colour. And what I'm going to do now is see where the folds are. So let's have a look. Start at the top. Where are... So this is quite a fold here, this one. So this is going to be dark under here then, right? So that's going to be folded. And then it comes and then it gets dark under there. So let's work on this fold. So we've got to go down there, up there, and it comes down here and up there. Right, that'll do. So let's take that darker pencil now and let's, let's get in there again. Right, come in here. Like that. And then it's going to come down there like that. Right. And we'll leave that little bit white there because that will... Oh, don't press the hard grey. There. <sighs> so that now is a fold, you see? And, it, and you ignore all the shading that you've done before, all your pearls and that, because this one supersedes the lot. And then you can go in with a really dark one, my favourite grey, Payne's grey. This is a good one. It's not black, but it's just about black. You could use a, a lead pencil too. See? And then that one really makes the shadow come in. So see how that now that folds over the back. Isn't that nice? That's a cool one. Right, let's have a look. Where's the next fold? Here's the fold here, this one here. 
So we'll take the lighter grey again, the brilliant boring beige. Let's have a look where this fold's going to go. So I'm going to, it's coming around like that and then it sort of disappears. So it's going to be here and then up there. There, like, I think so. Where am I going with this? Let's have a look. Yeah. I think this is about right. So it's going to come around there like that. There's the fold there, that little flap there. So it comes around like that, goes over the top of those pearls and folds around the back there. And what I found was when I, when I did this, right, and this, and this, and this, what happens is when you start, you start to, you realise the first time you go, oh, yeah, I haven't got a lot of folds going on here. I could have, I should have focused a little bit more. This is how it works in my head anyway. I should have focused a little bit more on the on the ribbon folds, on the, you know, on this bit so that this is like hanging over the top of the next bit. And then you suddenly you realise, oh, I didn't do a lot of that because I, so you, then you, you go again and the next time you do it, you're very aware that you you want to bring it round the bottom here and here and here. So you've got loads more folding opportunities. You see, there's a lot more wraparound going on. Look, because I was deliberately concentrating. So in order for, for to be able to put that shadow in, I have to travel underneath with the with the the lines. So you sometimes there's less. There's less opportunity for folds because the lines that you did didn't go in underneath again. Makes total sense, doesn't it? That doesn't mean that it's no good. It just means you haven't got a lot of folds going on. And the next time, if you want folds, you know what to do to create them. That's that's the bottom line here, isn't it? So this is quite a good one. And we'll take our dark grey. So that's the thing. It's just about building up the shade. Yeah. So that's going to be a really nice one. So I'll go to the lightest one first. And I don't, I'm not going to press too hard because the stamp board also is, is quite it's quite soft. It would you'll press into it if you press really hard. So that one there's that one. And I'm going to go in with the second grey, a little bit closer to the edge. There you go. Build up the layers. So that's coming in there now. And you know, if you if you if you think you've overcooked it, then you can always come in with a look with your pink eraser, our biggest selling item on the website. <laughs> Always makes me laugh. That just about sums us lot up. Right. So you could take it out again. You can knock it out, can't you? Knock it back. And then you can come in with a darker one and stay well, real close to the edge now. See, I've pressed too hard there. So I'm going to take that back. And the thing is, because the lines are done with pen, oh, hello, because the lines are done with pen, they don't move. They stay. So you just go again then. So that one's a little bit too dark. Am I sweating the small stuff? No, I'm really lost in the detail, which is a good thing because it means that I, I'm not thinking about anything else while I'm doing this, friends. There we go, you see? It's just about getting that depth underneath there to make it look like it's over the top. Yeah, we're getting there now. And sometimes highlights and lowlights, sometimes you've got to take your rubber and and not get the highlight the, the highlight back. It maybe I overcooked it with the see? Get that bit back. Oh my tummy, can you hear that? Good grief. Right. Yeah, getting there now. How's yours coming along? Do you enjoy doing this sort of artwork? There, that shade is coming now. I think I'm going to bring that back now with the boring, the brilliant boring beige, warm grey too. There we go. There, now we're getting there. That. 
Yep. And then I think I've got, well, I've got some black that I want to add there as well. Not happy with this area here because the, 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 the rubber's not really doing its job for me, is it? Let's have a look. Sometimes the pink comes off. That's all right, though. I'm going to have to get the white one out. Because that's the other thing, of course. You've got white pencils as well, haven't you? You've got white pencils. You've got white erasers. Let's see if I can... Yeah. Let's get rid of some of this. That's better. Now we're cooking with gas. Right. Okay. You see, so so what you're doing is you're bringing in the shadows and you're bringing in the three dimensional aspect, and it looks so different um, when you when you put the shadow in compared compared, for example, to uh, when it's flat. Look at the difference just with a little bit of shading. I think it's great. And you can open it up or you can keep it, you know, you can keep it really tight and compact. You can add more blackness as well. So it's entirely up to you. So the thing is, though, you've got to make sure that you're putting contrasting patterns next to each other. Otherwise, they get confused. So, for example, in this area here, there's quite a lot of... There's, there's a lot of stripes going along here. Now I've got to look, if I were to color that in in black here, do black along there, right here. If I put a black line in there, I probably need my 01. Do you build your doodle, you see? There, that's better. Okay. Then you come in, you build your tile, and you just create contrast. That looks more like it. Then I'm going to come through here and go with the flow, and then it comes out the other side there. Nice. There you go. Okay. So we've got that sorted as well. Did we put an edge on this one? Let's just check. Yeah. Yeah, we did. So the way to put the edge on, in case you weren't with us last week, I just took a Sharpie pen You just run it down the side and then it, you get that lovely black edge. So that's really easy too. And then it's a question of, now it's decisions. Do you want to put black lines in? Like I, I can see, for example, that this one here, let me see, maybe that, do you think... That black block there might be really nice, you know. I mean, it's quite a big black block, but I think I'm going to go for it. This one here. See, and the other thing to bear in mind is here, it's it's which area are you doing first? So you can, you can put your shading in, and then you can go back in and add detail if you choose to. So I'm just building contrasting areas now. And it's not finished until... Until I think, yeah, that'll do. So it's it's not, it's important not to judge yourself or in judge what, what you're doing until it's finished. Just go with the flow. Okay. So let me see, Paul, he's going to be back at 12 o'clock on the craft store. And I shall probably spend a happy hour Finishing this off, because it's good for the head. There you go. That looks good. I like that. It's in the tucks in there. I like that one. Yeah. You see, I quite like, I'd like to put a bit of black across here. But if I do that, I'm going to have to, I, do you know, I'm going to go, like, I'm going to cut that off there. So now, rather than bring the black round here, I'm going to put some black in there. There. So on Monday when we get together, we're going to do this one. 
don't 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 overthink it but this is the one we're going to do don't have to worry about it yet but i've got this idea and it's going to be really nice and it'll be a lovely contrasting tile to this quite dark tile this would be quite a nice one and we can we can do it in 2 hours so we'll easily finish this on um on thursday together you know and that's the thing about the shack whether you whether you doodle along whether you just hang out with us whatever suits you it's your it's your life you do what you find good for you what what's good for you that's what you've got to figure out what do you enjoy i mean last week i don't know, i read about I, I wrote about it in my blog i put the telly on in the afternoon one day i think it was saturday actually which <laughs> you know it's not you know why did i feel guilty about putting the telly on on a Saturday afternoon. Really did, you know. It was comical. I didn't know what was wrong with me. Well, I couldn't actually. I wanted to and I couldn't because I didn't know how to turn the telly on. That's a That tells you a story. I had to wait till Dave came home from work, which tells you another story. He was at work. I wanted to watch some Downton Abbey because <laughs> I'm I'm binge watching it at the moment. And I didn't know how to turn the telly on. And I wanted to watch it in the afternoon, which was really like, and I thought, what's wrong with me? That I feel guilty for relaxing in front of the telly on a Saturday afternoon. Isn't that strange? It's like I don't feel it was productive. So I had to kind of go through this process of, so I'm wasting, I'm allowed to watch television in the evening when I'm so tired that I haven't got energy for anything else, but I'm not allowed to watch television in the afternoon. This is how my head works because it's not, not a guilty pleasure, but it's like, you should be doing something else. You should be, you should be working. You should be being productive. You should be doing pottery. You should be doing drawing. You should be doing lino cuts. You should, you should, you should, you should. And I thought, who says? Who's in charge of my life? You know, if I want to watch Downton Abbey and I want to find out if Mr. Bates is going to get prosecuted, then that is my good right. <laughs> yeah, so I had a bit of a learning curve, 62 years old, and I felt I was being a real rebel watching Saturday afternoon Downton Abbey. I mean, for the love of God. <laughs> It is comical, really. And then I started thinking, it's, it's, nobody, nobody taught me that I wasn't allowed to. My mum my and dad had never, they always watched Saturday afternoon. I, for some reason, came to the conclusion that it wasn't acceptable that I should do that. Workaholic, I suppose, you know. And it's the same as this. It's, it's like, who says I'm not allowed to? Who says this is a waste of time because it's not the ironing or it's not productive or it's not making money or it's not this or it's not that, you know? Yeah, I know. It's funny the way we're wired, isn't it? And sometimes there's just some crossed wires. It's like tangled. And you go, and you think, hang on a minute, unravel that wiring because that is crossed wiring. That does not stack up. That is not logical, people, you know? And then you unravel the wiring and you look at it and you think, how absurd was that? How funny, you know, to think that I couldn't watch telly on a Saturday afternoon. Or, no, not on a Saturday afternoon, on an afternoon, any afternoon. I'm only allowed to watch telly when it's dark. <laughs> I know, I know. There's no hope. <laughs> Is anybody else in the same boat as me? Does anybody else feel that you should never watch telly in daylight? You should only, you're only allowed to watch telly when it's dark in the evening, after tea, after tea. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, here's the irony of it. I, 
I do TV shows during the daytime. So there's a built in assumption that that everybody else is going to be watching, that people do watch in daytime. It's called daytime telly, isn't it? <laughs> you know, when everybody watches um, like there are morning shows, aren't there? Like on television, breakfast TV. I've never watched breakfast TV in my life. <laughs> never. Because. No, no, it's not part of my my routine. Maybe when I get a little bit older, it will be. Now I've given myself permission to watch Downton Abbey on a Saturday afternoon. There's no stopping me, friends. <laughs> and yet it's perfectly acceptable to me to come out here at 10 o'clock in the evening and write a blog. Isn't that weird? Oh yeah, I know. We've all got we've all got something, you know. <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at these and let's put closure to this because could you believe we, we've been hanging out for an hour already together? So what I think is we're gonna we're gonna get together again on. Um, let me just pan out a little bit so you can't see. There you go. We're gonna get together again on Monday. And we're going to make more tiles. So you don't need to use the stamp board. Stamp board is just, it's its nice because it's really, it's lovely for colouring in on and stamping on, funny enough. Um, you can use squares. You don't have to. I'm going with the squares because they sit together. I'm going to make, I'm going to make like a wall of tiles, I've decided. But I mean, the little triangles. And you'll notice I'm sticking with the little sizes because they're bite size you know of course they come in different sizes they come in three different sizes the stamps but i'm going with the little ones or maybe the middle one on the um because it's achievable it's it's achievable do you remember when we did that one that optical illusion that was pretty cool wasn't it see that's the larger one mm, there you go so there we are i i just to me, right, this is it. I've got this box and I put my I put my few little grey pencils in it, like that. There you go. And I put my tiles in it. There you go. And I put my shapes in it. And I've got my bits and everything that I've used. And it all goes in here. And then, look, I'll show you. When you come out, that is my therapy box. This is is my mental well-being box not the television <laughs> this is my therapy box and you know what the best thing is look i can take that anywhere i want and so going back to what we were talking about unblocking your mojo see that's it just to have a couple of pens and a bit of paper or a couple of, see the, the prescribed think about this as well is there's something quite deluxe about the stamp board you feel like you're doing something it's got some grit to it. It's kind of woody, something nice about it. Um, same as using the polychromos. They're a really deluxe pencil. You know, they're beautiful to use. And that's that's a feel-good thing. It's a feel-good thing. Feel-good factor. Feel-good factor stamp board. Feel-good factor good pen. I'm not saying this because I want you to buy it or I'm trying to sell you something. It's just getting that kind of, that that motivation. If you're if you're using nice things, that makes you feel motivated too, I feel. And, and so my point is, my my mojo box is here, you know, and I can I can sit in the garden when it's warmer, I can sit in the living room, I could even watch Downton Abbey and do this. I could, I'll try it. <laughs> I'll try it. But I really must learn how to use the remote. <laughs> anyway, what else do I want to tell you? That's about it, really. I just want to, I think we're going to get there with this mojo thing. You know, we'll get there. Just slowly, slowly catch your monkey. There's no pressure. You know, it's not, a, it's not an exam. I haven't got to pass an exam. We'll be fine. So have a lovely Thursday. Get a doodle box going. Yeah, I might even find a nice box to decorate, you know, that'd be nice too. I might do, I might decorate my doodle 
on a therapy box, you know, rather than an old plastic thing. Hmm, something to think about. Yeah, and I shall join you again. Let's get together again on Monday at 10 o'clock. And we're going to do that, another really cool doodle. And the only thing that I... I will use, I think I will, I haven't got, I haven't got them with me here. You know the poly, the, what are they called? Not poly, poly. Um, let me think for a minute. Oh, I'm so tired. Um, we sell them. Perga colours. <laughs> the felt tip pens that have got uh, the really fine, et, the fine ends. We may, I might get them out of the cupboard. So I don't think we'll get to them before next Thursday. So if you've got them, have them at the ready. Otherwise, just colour in pencils or something like that. We'll put a little flash of colour through one of our doodles. Yeah? Live life in colour, hey? Eh? Anyway, listen, have a lovely Thursday. Thank you for your company. Jilly, thanks for all your help. And um, take it easy, hey? Eh? Easy does it. Keep smiling. Don't sweat the small stuff. Make something. Be creative. Go with the flow. Lots of love. Bye-bye now.